Right, morning everyone. Um, I've cut 16 six inch squares and I've used uh, an embroider's ruler which is happily in six inches which makes things really easy and a fabric roller but um, clearly you need to use whatever you've got there to cut your fabric into six inch squares. This is um, just a piece of uh, curtain lining which I've used uh, as a demo. Um, this is the look of the um, cotton linen-y twill type fabric um, that I've got. There is a bit of give in it, which there shouldn't really be, but hey ho, uh, we're only playing. We're not professionals. So having got your six inch square, if you make yourself a, um, a effectively a four inch or 10 centimetre square cardboard um, template, what that will do is enable you to centre your uh, design um, into the middle of the square um, and then when you put your uh, fabric into your five inch hoop the um, pattern should be pretty much centre. So um, that, that those are our beginnings. Um, clearly the fabric itself should be zigzagged and you can use your machine to do that or um, over so if you've got nothing else to do with your life, which at the moment maybe you haven't, but I have. Anyway, there you go. So um, next thing I should have told you about earlier is you could really do with a fabric pen because um, what the fabric pen will do is draw your design for you. Um, well, obviously it won't draw it on its own. You'll have to actually manipulate the pen. Um, <clears throat> But then once it's done, um, you can cover up the pen marks with your sewing. But if there is any pen mark left, then a warm iron will get rid of the pen magically for you. Um, right, so this is the um, first design. Uh, so this is a virus one. Um, and if you want to practice first, you can do. But effectively using that... Um, four inch square that we had before then basically all we're going to do is draw out a shape rather like that a little bit like a space rocket um, and then if you put uh, seven little tails out the top in whatever way you want one two three four five six have one like that okay that is our basic design uh, and then along that, we want just a zigzag. So I've done one, two, three points down that side and one, two, three points down the other side. That is our first design. And it's called the Volcano. Okay, so I'm um, not following my own advice. I have drawn... Um, my design which as you can see is completely off center so don't do that do, do it properly like I said before but I'm doing this really quickly because um, there's lots of other things that I should be doing really at the moment but hey ho so anyway um, so I'm just going to show you the basic uh, stitches and for those of you that have not dealt with cruel before um, you'll see that it comes in um, four strands and um, if you use your needle, which is a lot easier than trying to use nails, um, you need to split the wool. And um, this isn't going to be on the video, but basically what I do is I stick that this part here in my mouth. And holding that bit, I use my hand to, to basically uh, pull and unravel as it goes. So here goes. Yeah, that was nice and quiet, wasn't it? So um, you've now got uh, two strands of um, working wool, um, each two ply. And um, I seem to have got myself a little knot at the end there, which is very rude. Oh no, it's gone. Okay, so um, there you go. Next thing is how to um, thread a needle. Uh, and the easiest way with the wool, on the basis that you've got um, a, a good 
working eye on your needle, um, which should be a cruel needle. It's not a very long needle um, and it's uh, reasonably blunt on the end. Some are um, sharper than others really. So using the um, pointy end of your needle rather than the eye end, um, wrap your wool over and um, pull it so it's really tight onto the um, needle itself and slide it off. And then turning your needle round, you should then be able to, with a little bit of wiggling, wiggle it through the eye of your needle. And that's how we thread our needle. So um, we're going to um, start with the outline of the design, which is going to be done in um, split stitch. So this is the uh, first design, uh, the first stitch that we're learning. And um, before we do that, we've got to know how to um, uh, apply our wool without using any knots. We don't want any knots on the back of the design. And the way we do that is to enter the um, fabric at some random place away from the main design and leave a nice tail. You can actually put a knot in that if you like um, because we're going to get rid of it. So if you feel you want it more secure you can put a knot in but otherwise I use a tail and just use my uh, thumb to cover it. And then if we just start, if you try and avoid starting on a corner that always seems to uh, be more difficult if you start on a corner to finish off neatly. So um, start in the middle of a, of a stripe if you can, if you're going all the way around in a circle that is. Bring it through and then make a small stitch. Okay, we've now got a stitch there and what we want to do is we want to come back up in the middle of that stitch. So if you use your thumb just to uh, secure the stitch down and we come up through the middle of the stitch itself so you've got wool on both sides of the stitch. You may just have to give it a little bit of an unravel at the back if it wants to twist. Okay, and then you've got your first stitch. And then starting from, from um, where you came out the first time, you want to go back in and make another stitch. And again, come back up in the middle of that stitch and so we carry on. Okay and that's forming your outline. Now you're wondering what's going to happen to this bit here aren't you? So what will happen is as we go all the way around the design and all the way up here then this on either side here <clears throat> this will become trapped uh, under our sewing, all being very, uh, all being well, we can we can always um, pull it a little bit to make sure it gets trapped under our sewing as we come back up on the reverse side. Uh, at which point we can then pull it through and just uh, snip it off with our embroidery scissors, which are very small and sharp and can cut very near. And uh, and that's how we do it. So um, on you go with that, kids. <laughs> 